How you doing, everybody? Today we're taking a quick look at Challengers, directed by Luca Guadagnino. Zendaya, Mike Faist, and Josh O'Connor play Tashi and Art Donaldson and Patrick Zweig, three people who throughout most of their adult lives have been heavily involved in tennis and each other. Tashi was once a tennis prodigy herself, but now is the coach and husband of Art. She also used to date Patrick, who was once Art's best friend and doubles partner. And through a wacky turn of events, they both end up competing in a Challengers event, which is sort of a lower tier tennis tournament. And years of friendship, rivalry, and just general horniness all bubble up to the surface. I'm sure I've said before that Twilight may have ruined love triangles for me forever. Challengers may have saved it. This is about as intense a story as you can get. Not just the love triangle part, but in general. I was heavily invested in this from the beginning, and I'm not even much of a tennis fan. I don't hate it, it's just not my thing. Every single time they took to the court, I'm like, this is the greatest sporting event I have ever seen in my life. Is tennis always like this? What have I been missing? The movie does a great job of making the sport look exciting through some amazing camera work. And it's heavily focused not just on the action, but also the athletes' bodies. How they move, how they stretch, how they sweat, how they swing the racket, how they slam the racket down in frustration. There's a lot of that. Some of these people might have some anger management issues, I'm just saying. All three actors clearly put in the work, although I'm sure they had some help from the VFX department. I think Zendaya said in an interview that in a lot of scenes the ball was added in post, which is expected. They're not really tennis pros, that's gonna happen. And in addition to all that physical tension, there's a truckload of sexual tension. It's maybe the first time I've seen a love triangle that was a true triangle. It's not just two guys going after the same girl, although there is that, but no, it's moving in all three directions. There is that threesome scene in the trailer, and honestly, I think the trailer made a bigger deal out of that than the movie actually did, but it does briefly result in Art and Patrick making out while Tashi just kind of leans back and enjoys the view. And it's not the only time when Art and Pat seem like more than just friends. Like, it's never explicitly stated that there's something going on there, but there's not nothing going on there. The movie spends the entire two hours and change of its runtime focused on these three individuals and their relationships with each other. They meet at some kind of junior tennis tournament just before Tashi and Art go off to college at Stanford, and Patrick skips college entirely and turns pro. At one point, Tashi is dating Patrick, but they have a falling out and she ends up marrying Art and their tennis careers all go in wildly different directions. And where there was once love between all three of them, it's very much a three-way love-hate relationship. Don't go into this movie expecting to see some healthy relationships because, ooh, good God, no. The story is told in a non-linear fashion, starting just before the Challengers event and constantly flashing back and forth. And they do a very good job telling this story. Even with all the bouncing back and forth on the timeline, it never feels unfocused. I never had trouble following the narrative. And everything is focused on these three individuals. There are no side characters, no side stories, no side nothing. All three of these actors are brilliant. I think this is the first time I've seen O'Connor in anything, and my god, he's talented. The story doesn't necessarily have any heroes, because really, all three of them are varying degrees of terrible. But that's okay, you can still tell an interesting story, even if there's not necessarily anyone to root for. Personally, I was rooting for them to all get the fuck away from each other, because my god, you are terrible together. Just go. Go your separate ways, please. As for the soundtrack... I'm gonna need to see the movie again before I can really comment on that. This is another Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross joint, and normally I like their work. I hated it in this movie through no fault of Reznor or Ross or really anyone involved with the making of the movie. This was 100% on the theater for not adjusting the sound mix correctly. Every time one of their songs were playing, I could not hear a word of the dialogue. And I know I've talked about this before, if you don't want to hear it again, feel free to skip ahead a bit, but it baffles me that this is still a thing. I swear there was a time when this was not a thing, and I never had to worry about going into a theater and worrying about a shitty sound mix. Now it seems to happen once a quarter. In any case, I do need to see the movie again at some point so I can decide, was the soundtrack really bad or is it fully the fault of the theater? My guess is the latter. Also, a word about the ending, and that word is... What? That's another reason I need to see the movie again, because I'm not entirely sure what happened there or how I should feel about it. I was very confused. But aside from that and the sound mix, this was excellent. Well acted, well shot, intense as shit, and I highly recommend it. Even if you don't know shit about tennis, doesn't matter. It's not important to the story. Go see it. You'll be fine.
And that's all I have to say about challengers. Till next time, take care.